For best viewing, go to full screen. This is filmed in full HD. Out it comes the other side, dead flat. Then I can turn it back over the other way. Dave here, how are you? This is my 15 inch thickness planer. This is called a Carbotec CTJ381X. I'm gonna talk about what this machine is capable of. I'm going to go through maintenance of the machine, changing oil, how to do that, and the lubrication points. Because there's been a bit of confusion I hear from some people that have owned this machine how to actually do it. It's not hard. Stick with me, I'll take you through it. Now I've had this machine for a couple of years now. I've used it an awful lot and I'm very, very happy with it. Now you may be aware that I've just recently purchased an 8 inch jointer. And the reason, the main reason I purchased that was because the knives on this machine are interchangeable with the knives on that new jointer. So it saves a whole lot of grief. I was extremely happy with the cut that I have with this machine and I haven't been let down with the cut on the other machine either. Very, very nice. Now, talking about the knives, they are all on a helical head. This machine has a 15 inch long helical head and all of the knives are placed around it. Each knife has got four cutting edges, so they last a long, long time. When one becomes dull or I strike a nail or something like that, all I have to do is mark the knife on the cutting edge that's dull with an indelible pen and rotate it a quarter of a turn, which is very easy. You undo the torque screw that holds it down, rotate the knife a quarter of a turn, make sure that the seat is still clean, it's a machined head, tighten it back up with the torque screwdriver and away you go, you're cutting again. Let me take you back to when I first purchased this machine and setting it up. It was a very pleasant experience and didn't take long at all. The machine arrived in one large plywood box. Inside that box were a few other cardboard boxes arranged around the machine and also in the cabinet and underneath the table. The two boxes that were beside the cabinet had the in-feed and the out-feed cast iron tables. They were too big to transport it like that, obviously bolt them on at the end is a whole lot better. To put those on, there's three bolts that lock the in-feed table to the main table and three bolts that lock the out-feed table to the main table. Below each of those bolts is a hex internal hex drive grub screw. Now they are designed to tighten up and they will adjust the in-feed to the main table so you can get it dead level get a straight edge in there run it across and it, you'll be amazed how, how they adjust it they pop the table up unbelievably well also the other things that are in there the jockey wheel so you pop the jockey wheel on and uh, then you can move the machine around in your workshop you don't need to purchase a mobile base for it already has one built in the uh, crank handle over on the other side of the machine there for raising and lowering the bed you pop, pop that on, it's just a matter of a keyway and a key, tighten the nut up over the top of it and it's on. Put the handle on the crank. And at the back here we have the dust chute. Dust chute, a few bolts across the top, a few bolts across the back, and works very, very well. That's the machine assembled. Allow yourself a couple of hours, maybe three hours if you're gonna take your time. And also just clean off the grease. There's, there's this greasy protective film on the tables, give that a clean off. That's just to stop it getting any rust as it's traveling overseas because these are all important for Australia. One of the other things I noticed was when I first ran it, I was getting some black powder around the casing here that holds all of the drive belts from the motor up to the head. 
to, to the cutting head. Now you can adjust the tension on the belts. There's a swing arm in the cabinet that supports the motor. It's very, very easy to adjust that if you need to. I loosened it off ever so slightly and it goes beautifully. I've, I'm very, very happy with it. The main advantage of having a helical head is that it's a much cleaner cut. The knives on this machine are all facing forward. So they all face directly forward with a flat cutter. It's about half an inch wide. Other machines, the, mach the blades are tipped over on an angle slightly. Now, if they were straight flat cutters, you would end up with a sawtooth pattern. So to compensate what's happening there, all of their cutters are slightly rounded on the front which will give you a slight scalloping and you need to just give that a light sand. One of the reasons why I prefer this. In extremely figured timber, the machines that have got the tipped over blades will deliver a cleaner cut because it's actually slicing. But I don't deal with a lot of figured timber so this machine is the one for me. And as you can see by this picture of the Merbo that I've just finished cutting, it delivers a beautiful job, especially on hardwoods. The advantage, other advantage of the helical head is apart from the super clean cut is the fact that it's a whole lot quieter as you yeah, when you turn the machine on so it's just coasting along with no load it's, it's, there's no need for earmuffs depending on what type of timber you have in there yeah throw some earmuffs on it's going to get a little loud but it's nowhere near as noisy as a straight blade machine so there's another advantage also no setting you don't need to use a setting jig to set the blades it's a machined head they'll go in perfect. Obviously you have the fact that you can rotate each knife when it, uh, when it wears out, so you have four bites at the cherry instead of one. Capacities of the machine. The machine will cut 15 inches wide by 8 inches deep. So that's the size piece of timber you could put through there. You know, you're going to be a strong fellow to put that <laughs> size through, but if you absolutely have to, the machine will accommodate it. Those sizes in metric are 381 wide by 205 millimetres deep. I'll show you a picture of that on the depth gauge. On the other side of the machine, you've got all of the maintenance area. So you've got the gearbox, you've got the chain and sprocket assembly which drives the infeed and the outfeed rollers, and you've all, the gearbox gives you fast speed or slow speed. So I can take you over to the other side and show you that. Let's talk about maintenance of the machine while I'm down here because a few people have said to me, Dave, oh, I, what's the story up here with changing the oil? You know, I, I undo the bolt and it's just a bolt. Well, don't be confused. The labeling's not too good up there. To change the oil in the gearbox. Now, so don't be confused by this cover here. This is only the chain and sprocket assembly cover and the chain and sprockets are transferring the power from the cutter head over to the outfeed roller and the infeed roller. So it keeps everything going that way. Now the gearbox changes the speed that it's delivering all that power to these rollers. I think the speed of the cutting head remains the same. So this guy here in the back here is where the gearbox is. Don't think that that screw there is a drain plug for the gearbox to drain the gear oil, because it's not. It's part of the housing clamping assembly. So it tells you up the top to change the oil in the gearbox once a year. It also tells you up the top there to lubricate once after 30 hours. Two different things. The gearbox once a year. Under here is the drain plug and I'll show a photo of where that actual plug is. Up here, let me see if I can touch it yet, that's it there. That's the filling point for the gearbox. Take a photo of that and show you. So the best way to do it is to use an Allen head, use one of those ball ones that I showed you, undo the filling point first get an ice cream container or something like that, there's only about half a litre, 400 mil is in that gearbox. Undo the bottom, drain the oil out. Maybe even put something under there so it just sits there while it's, because it's going to take a while, it's very viscous, it's 80-90 grade. 
when it's fully drained, put the plug back in, screw it back in, and then now you have to put the oil, new oil in. Don't be tempted to tip the machine on its side. I know someone that's actually done that. Bad move. <laughs> it's not a good move at all. There's two ways you can do it. One way is to use a, a hanging basket watering system. You know those squeeze bottles that have got the pipe that comes out and hooks over the top to watering hanging baskets. You could try one of those. Put the uh, pipe from the, from the end of the watering thing into there. Oil and just squeeze. See how that goes. I haven't done it, but I've been told it works. The way that I would do it is I would feed a plastic hose into there and bring it up and hook up, make a little holder up here for a funnel and I pour the oil in a little bit at a time. I make sure I've got a full 400 mil in that container, no more. And then keep pouring it in until it's full. Make sure you put the drain plug in first and away you go. That's the way to do it. Whilst we're on machine maintenance, they also recommend that you put some oil on these uh, worm drives and also on the outside of the pillars because this table rises and falls. I think this is a pinion gear that runs against the worm drive. And this one is connected to the other three posts via a big chain that wraps around under there like a, like a bicycle chain. Turn that, it turns them all. That raises and lowers them all at the same time. Very, very accurate. I'll show you here also, there's a couple of grub screws very big grub screws, they hold the pressure springs for the rollers. This is very easy. Okay, you take it out, pull the spring out, and then you put a couple of drops of oil down in there. Not a lot. Put the spring back in, put the grub screw back in, and tighten them up. Leave it about an eighth of an inch from the top. It's only when it's just really starting to take the pressure of the spring. That's about it. See that? Don't go too tight. So that little bit of oil that you've just dropped in lubricates this shaft in that bearing mount. See there's the spring there pushing down on it. There's a hole in the top and that's how it works. We've got these things down here. Now at this point here is a little bit obscure but it's the clamp that locks the head so on the other side you have these little handles that you loosen off and this clamp releases the post releases the table from the post and then when you get the bed to the height you desire you tighten those clamps up on the other side and it pulls this and locks this post as well so all four posts get locked when you tighten those clamps up that all happens from the other side uh, 15 amp. This machine is a three horse 15 amp machine. That is, for Australian conditions, that is the larger earth pin. Now it's only got a very short lead when you buy these things. So I went up to my local electrical wholesaler and I purchased a 7 meter long 15 amp lead with a 15 amp socket both ends. And that plugs in and it stays out of the way. I've actually connected it to the dust line that I put in by zip ties and it keeps it out of the way. So that just sits there like that. The, one of the other good things about the machine is it has these rollers on top. Working alone, which I do a lot, not because I haven't got any friends, because that's how I prefer it, <laughs> I can feed timber in from this side, go around to the other side, tail it out, put it on these rollers and feed it back so it's sitting up there waiting for me to pass it through again if I need to. Lifting and lowering this machine. Down here are lifting bars. Don't try and lift the machine by the in-feed or the out-feed table. They're not designed to take that kind of load. This is a heavy machine. I think it's around one third of a ton. Lifting bars front and back both sides. There's four bars there so if you've got a forklift you can pick the machine up and put it onto a truck or onto a trailer or you can sling it. So if you haven't got a forklift, maybe you've only got an engine crane or something like that, you can put slings around, hoist it up with an engine crane and pick it up and put it on a trailer that way. Very, very handy. They slide back in 
when they're not being used. All right, so do I like the machine? I like it an awful lot. I've had it for a couple of years. It's done a lot of work for me. I'm very impressed with it. And adding the CTJ350X, these two work in harmony so well. More information, if you want more information, all that kind of stuff, have a look down in the description box. And keep on coming back. Give me the thumbs up if you reckon it's worth it. It does make a difference. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.